Hey guys, it's Jason Webb. This is the show that highlights local business leaders and the movers and shakers of Minnesota. Welcome to Minnesota Made. All right, so I'm uh, meeting with Sarah Andrews with Tradesman International, which I really had no idea about that a company like this existed. It's quite interesting in how everything works. And, you know, one thing I learned about you, Sarah, that I also take pride in is the fact that you're a straight shooter. And uh, I like that in people. Um, and we can get into more of that later. But, uh, you know, for all the listeners, if we could talk a little bit about um, your backstory, where, where you came from, what steps you took along the way to get to the point where you are now, and... Um, and yeah, well, let's start with that. So where, where'd you grow up? I grew up in St. Cloud. Um, my backstory for construction started in the mines. Um, I worked in the taconite mines up in northern Minnesota for U.S. Steel and Cleveland Cliffs and, and Arsler and Magnetation at the time. And so um, I wanted a way to find out how I can go to work employed as a woman on the Iron Range. And the Iron the mines is where a lot of... Um, are employed most of the community there. So I um, got a job where I could learn um, conveyors and hydraulics and that's kind of where I ended up with that job and it worked out well for me. I really liked it. I like how the movement of um, conveyors happens and when you get to know it that's how you can make your money. Um, hydraulics too is another part of the mining uh, industry as well. Uh, so I just it's a lot of educating and learning and and communicating to the customer when you work with those those items in a yeah. mine. Okay, so what what was it like being a woman in a male dominant industry like mining and construction or conveyors that you were in? What was that like? Um, I never thought about it. No. Um, my customers that didn't really treat me any differently um, because I didn't. Maybe I never asked for them to treat me differently because I always prove myself. Yeah. Um, whether that was um, doing what I say I'm going to do, uh, and being educated, and being determined. Yeah. Okay. That's 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 good. So you're working up in the uh, living and working in the mines mm -hmm. in northern Minnesota mm -hmm. for a period of time, and uh, then what? Then we moved to central Minnesota. Um, and so I was interviewing for multiple positions, um, not knowing where I really wanted to go, but knowing that I do have and do like the construction industry. Uh, I found Tradesman International. Uh, in a nutshell, what Tradesman does, if there is a manufacturer or anyone in construction, heavy highway, plumbing, electrical, anything, uh, you're looking for um, skilled work, that's what you do is you give me a call. Um, we have skilled tradesmen uh, locally and traveling. We put out 17,000 guys a day. Jeez. A lot of our customers, they stay with us and they sign up with us because if you look at it as a business strategy, uh, by using us, we take on all the risk for the employees. So if there's an injury, it's on tradesmen. If you need to lay anyone off, your project is done you don't pay unemployment you just release the employee back to us and same so then it's it's like a cycle you have a project you need give us a call give me a call and we put that skill labor on your job site and they follow your rules all the risk is on tradesmen you're done with them you release them back another project comes up three months later or you need us for a year or five years or just three days mm. we can be a solution yeah, so it sounds like a big difference between you and your company than some of the other ones out there is that you guys focus on skilled labor, mm -hmm. not just general. Labor. We have both, but uh, our, we're most proud of our skilled okay. labor because of the relationships we have with our tradesmen and with our customers, and we make a good match based on what do the customers need for that job site, what is the scope of work, and then how does that fit in with the employee? What have they done in the past? Okay. And then making a good match there. 
A lot of customers like to talk to the employees before they start them. They're very well informed before they say, yes, I'll take them on my job site. Okay. And when you say um, customers, I think mm -hmm. that's what you said, that's referring to the employer, right? Mm -hmm. the, yep. the company itself. And then you have the employee or the, you call the tradesman, mm -hmm. right? Uh, your day-to-day, -day, are you dealing with both the uh, employee and the employers mm -hmm. equally, or are you dealing more with the employer? What, what would you say you deal most with? And um, conversations, you know, mm -hmm. that take up most of your time, that type of thing. Face-to-face -face customers, and with them quite a bit. I visit their job sites, I visit their offices, I do what they need me to do, and I try and intercept um, and know what they need from me before they even have to ask so that's more face-to-face -face on a daily basis yeah. with employees it's mostly over the phone um, a lot of my customers use our travelers um, which that's what they do that's what they want to do they travel uh, and they pick up a lot of skills along the way um, and so a lot of our skilled labor are travelers mm. and I think you mentioned earlier also that um, you deal with super skilled tradesmen, like master plumbers mm -hmm. and such. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe you, uh, you just came from a job site in which you have to wear the PPE, the mm -hmm. hard hats, the steel toe boots and so on. Um, that's interesting that you go on the job site. What do you do on the job site while you're there? Like, what are you looking for? And what's that purpose of you walking around with your hard hat on? Well, for me, PPE is about safety, and I'm very safety-minded, and that's what tradesmen is, too. So we want to make sure that we feel our customers and our potential customers know that we have that in mind when we're walking on the job site because it, make, it can make a customer nervous about having somebody walking on their job site. So I want to be fully safe. And then when I do talk to them, I just just talk to them like a person, not mm -hmm. trying to sell them anything, mm -hmm. just seeing uh, what they may need. From me. Okay, so you just stopping by a job site mm -hmm. and meeting with your customers, see if there's any need for additional tradesmen um, to help get their job done on time or what have you. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, whether they're a potential customer and I don't know them yet, just kind of strike up a conversation, see what they need. But if it is a, a current customer and they have tradesmen on the job site, just making sure that um, we do a I, I like to do safety moments and toolbox talks. It just goes over to always be aware of your surroundings, look mm -hmm. for any tripping hazards with our current employees that are on the job site, and then the potential customers just talking okay. to them, letting them know. Are you doing the toolbox talks yourself? Mm -hmm. You are? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Do you have a safety background, or where do you mm -hmm. come up with that? Well, when you work in the mining industry, it, um, one step can mean life or death. And so uh, I've been through multiple trainings for MSHA and safety trainings. And so uh, after a while, it just becomes Part second nature okay. Yep, to yeah. be safe. And so it's just, I always talk about just even when summer's coming along, stay hydrated, make sure you get plenty of sleep so that we can make safe decisions on the job site. Um, and even just going to um, tying off and do an inspection before you go on a lift, just mm. Yeah, cool. Uh, now, you've been doing this for a period of time with Tradesman International. Are you finding a, um, I don't know, like a, uh, do you get a good idea on who's a good fit with Tradesman as the employer, as the customer side, versus who's not a good fit? I mean, is there uh, a bread and butter uh, employer that you typically work with, or is it just all over the place? It's anybody. I have a range from uh, a builder. Uh, or he actually does remodeling, and he's one person, and he uses us um, for help on certain things that he may need help on the job site. So he has one person out with us, for up to a customer who's $25 million account a year. So there's that business strategy. Your one-man shop has doesn't have to worry about the risk of injury. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to worry about unemployment because that's all on tradesmen, but he's getting that skilled labor. The $25 million count, same thing, there's that business strategy. You don't have to worry about your unemployment. It helps free up HR to do other things that they're doing. 
uh, and you still have control over the screening process of all of our employees coming to you and every customer, whether they're one man shop or $25 million comp, they're fully informed before they start that employee on the job site, whether they take one or 25 at a time. Yeah. Wow. Now, <clears throat> can you talk a little bit about uh, how does Minnesota compare to other states right now as far as the construction, construction industry? Or is Minnesota busy or busier than, let's say, New York? Um, and has the price of building materials and labor you know, going up, has that affected your business at all? Yeah, a lot. Uh, so the first part of your question, um, Minnesota is very busy. I'm not sure how it compares to the other states. But at the moment when we have travelers coming from other states, they're just not having the job that fits them. So they, they are traveling to Minnesota to come for those jobs. Okay. And then uh, manufacturers um, have been behind on uh, different kinds of materials for, and for, that's from what I'm hearing from my customers, whether they're um, six months to 12 months behind on some product. And that's been from my customers, from builders, to um, steel erection, to um, electrical. Okay. So you got your your wire, your 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 copper, your lumber, mm -hmm. your steel pipe. Those are all set back. Okay. Mm -hmm. huh. And uh, do you have a surplus or more employees, tradesmen looking for work, or do you have more clients? Um, that can't find employees right now, that's difficult to find the, the, the tradesmen. Is there, um, uh, is there a shortage of one or the other right now that you're feeling? Well, I'm experiencing a lot of need for labor, okay. um, but I'm also experiencing a lot of good skilled labor going out and staying out and being productive. Okay, so pretty equal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, if, if I'm an employer, looking for that master plumber or I need an extra 20 guys to complete a project. Um, what's, what's the, I don't know, the vetting process or what's the process to get involved with um, Tradesman International? Just give me a call and maybe the number will be there. Oh, you can mention what your number. You? Yeah, you can. Uh, it's 320-249-3301. So 320-249-3301, you ask for Sarah. Okay. Um, and I just, so if you're an electrical company, I just go through scope of work. What are you looking for in this person? Um, as a person and, and skills. Okay. What are you looking for? Um, how long, the duration, Monday through Friday, just so I can give the, the employee an idea of what their life will be like if they start on this job site. So are they gonna be working? Um, 10 hour days with five hour days on Saturdays. It would just what will their life be like? And it's not something that's going to take a lot of time because I do talk a lot to a lot of uh, foremen and superintendents that are in their truck. They just want to make the call, get done. So I know how to do it um, quickly for because time is money. What What is the process oh, if yeah. I'm an employer looking to bring on some skilled tradesmen? Do I got to fill out like a long form, an application? Uh, you know, being, let's, let's say I'm brand new to the process, mm -hmm. like what's that, um, yeah, what's that process like for a new employer? Well, for someone who hasn't been doing this for a while, it might be a long process, but with me, I, I just ask scope of work and what will the life be like for this employee on the job site. So we go over um, duration of job, where is it located, what are the hours a week, and what's the scope of work you're looking for this person, and then what are you looking for in this person. So I'd say 10 minutes. Oh, that's I it. can get a good read okay. on, on what the customer is needing, make them feel comfortable, they're making a good decision by talking to me. And then I go out, I put all that information for our recruiters uh, in our system, and mm -hmm. then when they send me candidates, I talk to those candidates as if I'm that customer. So scope of work, this is what your life's gonna be like. Are you, when you show up to work, it starts at eight o'clock, when do you show up? I want them to say 7.45. Right. Um, when you go onto a job site, what's first thing you do? I want them to say, put on my PPE. So I'm looking for things like that, 
that will be good for the customer and and I want to be another voice for the customer that they I can get all that done for them mm -hmm. while they're working. Do you have a goal or a typical or an average when it comes to actually placement of those those tradesmen? You know, if I want five guys ASAP, mm -hmm. how long does that typically take? It depends if it's a concrete, if it's an electrician, if it's a master plumber. It it's a different yeah. I can I can have a master plumber roll off a job on a Tuesday and that customer just happens to be calling a, cus a plumbing customer. Maybe they call Thursday. I'm like, I got that for you. Okay. Um, or that master plumber still scheduled out through September and the customer calls me for a master plumber. You know what? I'll just, it, I, I don't promise anything that I can't yeah. deliver on. Yeah. So I just say, we'll do our best. And we go out there and I will feed you information on candidates like that. If we're not finding a master plumber, that's typically, um, it is a unicorn out there and they need it for a certain reason. So I know that their request won't change, but say they needed a journeyman plumber, um, um, or, uh, concrete, so let's go to concrete. They need a concrete guy, um, who can do a journeyman concrete, who can do this, 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 and this. Um, and it's been a couple weeks because of the concrete's really busy right now. Then I'll call them and say, would you look at, we have an apprentice here. Mm. He's available for you right now. Here's his skill set. Is this something you're open to? So I, I, I want to just be in constant. Give them options. Mm -hmm. yeah. Give them options. Yeah. Now let's say I am a master plumber and I live in Florida, but work mm -hmm. is slow. And, uh, I've heard great things about Minnesota. Uh, and I want to get involved in your program. Is it a similar conversation? It's just, um, you know, what are you looking for? What are your skill sets? What are you willing to do? Or can you tell, tell me a little bit about that? Well, if there's a master plumber in Florida, that means that they probably contacted the Florida office. Okay. And then the Florida office would sign them up as an employee. Okay. And there's certain paperwork for that. And then they would see in the system that I'm looking for one. Oh, okay. And then we would make a connection there. I would screen that master plumber as if I'm that, as if I'm HR or that employer, owner, yeah. employer of that plumbing company looking for them. Yeah. And then if it's a good fit, then I want to connect them right away. Okay. Um, so then I would say to the employee, is it okay if I share your phone number with the owner? He would just like to chat with you for a couple of minutes. Oh yeah. So then, then that conversation starts, they feel more comfortable about it, and then the, the employer will call me and say, hey, start on Monday. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, now, we originally met through a networking event, right? And uh, do you go to a lot of those networking events? And uh, are you looking for, I don't know, when you go to those, are you looking to maybe make new connections with... Uh, employers mm -hmm. is that kind of mm -hmm. yeah okay all right cool um well is there anything else that you want to talk about regarding uh tradesmen international or the direction it's headed or what you're looking for at this time or is there a shortage in anything or anything that you want to bring up i just uh if you're looking for help on your job sites, just give me a call. I won't tell you anything um, that I won't deliver on. Uh, I have a lot of knowledge for the employees and scope of work for job sites. So just give me a call. We can chat, get business done, and get guys out on your job sites and get productive. Um, guys out on your job sites to get those projects done that you're working on now. Your future projects that you may need people for. And then if you want to bid out more work that you know you don't have enough labor for, well, let's work in those tradesmen for that job that you're bidding out and you can know that you have that labor set there. Yeah, seems like a great option. I mean, mm -hmm. the flexibility of it, if I was a contractor, all I hear right now is it's really hard to find good employees. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what, when I'm talking to business owners. And uh, I'm a business owner and sometimes you're overstaffed, sometimes you're understaffed and to have that flexibility as a contractor to have skilled laborers or you know, skilled contractors, tradesmen available on call um, 
that's a pretty awesome service. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Uh, thanks, Sarah. I appreciate Thank you. your time. Thank you. All right. Thank you.